<laughs> Hi. Hello, everyone. This is Aegon of Astora, and welcome back to my blind playthrough of Elden Ring. This is episode number 52, being recorded on Thursday, May 18th, 2023. I hope you're all having a fantastic day whenever it is you find yourself watching this. So, in the previous episode, of course, we did not know where the heck to go within Liondale. We cleared everything out and really could not find a path forward. So we are here in the subterranean shunning grounds and I wish I could remember which incantation it was, but I was listening to an old episode yesterday while doing the dishes and whatnot. Um, as usual, just making sure that I didn't say anything silly or totally out of order in those episodes. And one of the items we acquired in that episode spoke of the sewers beneath... I don't know if it specifically said the sewers beneath the capital, but it did speak of... The three fingers lying beneath the capital. Ah, it was, we got it in the Frenzied Flame Village. That's what it was. So, hmm, this one releases a maddening shriek that causes madness buildup in foes nearby. This incantation also causes madness buildup in the caster and makes enemies more likely to target them. It is said that the sickness of the Flame of Frenzy began with Shabriri, the most reviled man in all of history. So, that wasn't exactly it. There was an item that specifically mentioned um, sorry I'm just reading these here um, it's too early to read and speak at the same time um, but essentially it identified the three fingers as being the source of the frenzy buildup and situated the three fingers in the, I don't recall if it specifically said the sewers beneath Lyondale, but it certainly identified underneath Lyondale as the location in which we will find that. So, oh gosh, you have a lot of HP friend, well done. He must have uh, done some farming in a lake game area. <laughs> Got some fancy moves too. Oh, that one hurt. Oh, oh, I'm gonna die. I should not be so patronizing. We handled this. <laughs> Good start to the episode. <laughs> we handled that friend so easily last time. Um, but I want to say that's probably because I was being a bit more careful because of course I didn't want to respawn all the enemies and whatnot so yeah so we're gonna do away with the rune for regenerating HP or FP and the reason for that is that we now have the great rune of oh gosh darn it We now have Rykar's Great Rune equipped, which as you can see would have just given us some additional HP there. And so rather than equipping those runes which, or the runes, the, what is this? Oh, don't, don't worry, it's just a pile of corpses with a sword. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> Um, I think we've seen something like that in, maybe it was the intro to the game or the trailer or something like that. It, it looks kind of like 
a hybrid of Gr Gravelord Nido and Gravelord Nido and the the Rotten. Um, yeah, frightening. So yeah, I I don't want to have backstab fish or parry fish or anything like that. So that's why we equip the Great Rune and we'll use that to sort of supplement our flask so that um, we can make it through the area, hopefully, without having to rest too many times. Because once again, I, I prefer to do it that way as a means of ensuring that we're not missing anything. <laughs> With that said, it, even though I would like to backstab fish less, that doesn't mean I'm not going to be backstab fishing. Yeah, I don't know how much HP that's actually regenerating, but every little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, every little bit helps when you are trying to save on your flasks. Oh. Yeah, so that fist attack has a lot of hyper armor. I have to be aware of that. Oh, we're in the ground. Oh, <laughs> what the heck? That was very strange. Yeah, so... Up before down, so we're not going to go down the ladder just yet. Let's make sure we've explored everything in this main sort of hallway here. So we got some blood-soaked manchetis and mask. Mask formed from tightly wound bandages soaked through with blood. Even the most ghastly cover is more inviting than the festering face beneath. Yikes. Any protection is welcome for the festering arms beneath. The music here has a very eerie vibe, as one might expect. Uh oh, is this about to break on us? Uh, -huh. <laughs> uh I love the you don't have the right meme. So <clears throat> excuse me. This appears to be a legacy dungeon. Of the sort that you know, I was just calling any sort of area in which you don't, in which you don't have the right to call torrent any area that wasn't an open, an open world area. I was referring to as a legacy dungeon, but I think it's more accurate to only characterize as a legacy dungeon those areas that sort of loop back around on themselves because. They are fewer and farther between. Oh my gosh, this place is 100% the depths. Because <laughs> the depths has a trap very much like that one. There's a rat popping out of a box almost in the exact same way. Okay, that scared me. Oh, what the heck? One of those plant friends? Oh, of course. Of course. Oh, this one has more poison than you normally do. Oh, no stamina management at all. calling finger remedy gosh darn you um someone else also pointed out in the comments don't have any names in front of me my apologies that we do in fact <laughs> 
I spent a lot of time in the Lake of Rot, so this person is going to be somewhat annoyed at this, but we spent a lot of time in the Lake of Rot complaining about not having something to heal uh, Scarlet Rot, but of course we do, and we have for quite some time, which is the Flame Cleanse Me incantation. So again, my sincerest apologies that I didn't realize I had it. Um, it cures both poison and scarlet rot. Of course, probably would not want to use it for poison over the other one that we have, which is just, what was it? Cure poison, because the cure poison has, I don't know, half the HP cost, I think it was, something like that. So we're only going to want to use that if we have Scarlet Rot build up. And so in addition to that, I went and looked at what other spells we could equip, incantations we could equip, and I got a few additional incantations that could prove useful. Why is it not moving? <laughs> Okay, that was fun. Yeah, you know, I'm enjoying this great rune thus far because we have not used a single flask as of yet, or have we? No, we haven't. Um, no life ahead. Okay. Oh gosh, darn slugs. Oh no. Okay, once again. That is <laughs> basically carbon copy of one of the traps that you find in the depths in Dark Souls 1. Where there's a there's an item at the end of a hallway. Or a sewer or something. Pipe. I suppose you would call it. Um and then a hole right in the middle. So for those who are maybe a bit over eager as I tend to be. You are liable to j just falling in the hole. Of course, the jump mechanic. Oh gosh, darn you. The jump mechanic is far less developed in that game. Gosh darn it, I don't like this place at all already. I'm. <laughs> uh, like I do and I don't. And so, yeah, I'm. I'm. Increasingly, you know, I actually wasn't originally going to do any recording today because. It's 7.10 in the morning. I've been recording since about 6.30. And by recording, I mean getting set up to record. And then I, I wanted to check one or two things in Lyondell before we actually came here. Just to make sure that I wasn't missing anything obvious. Um, managed to find a way to get that item that was on that one rooftop. Which we had just sort of given up on. Um, and it, yeah, it was relatively simple to get that item. Okay, so we can go up or down. And I'm cognizant of the fact that we still have that ladder. We have a ladder going down from the first hallway and then one heading up. But at this rate, I'm not even going to be able to find my way back to the ladder. Oh gosh, you scared the daylights out of me. My goodness. <laughs> Fireproof dried liver. Strip of white flesh. Strip of white flesh.
Oh, another friend. Wow. <laughs> it's cute how we just sort of climb down the ladder. <clears throat> Apologies, I'm losing my voice. Or given the time of day, perhaps I have not... Not gained my voice yet? How would you describe it? <laughs> your friends just keep coming, don't you? Somber smithing stone level 8. But yeah, really interested and intrigued by the possibility. That we might get to meet the three fingers here. The maddening three fingers. So this is a shortcut leading back to the starting area, which is excellent. This is going to be a shortcut exit, presumably. No, it's not. Okay. Let me just grab this item first. Make sure there's nothing behind it. No. So that tunnel has caved in, seemingly. Yeah, this is the depths. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's the depths, at least this particular room. It's like the depths crossed with... Um, the depths crossed with... What am, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, <laughs> the Duke's Archive Prison. So before we go there, let's we're going to finish exploring these tunnels here. Because that looks like a whole new area. And uh, if we need to drop down to get that scarab, then we might not be able to get back up. So let's just finish exploring in here. And uh, I need to try to be aware <laughs> that there are holes here that I can fall in. Or be aware, remain cognizant of that fact. Gosh darn it. Sorry, slug friends. It's these, uh, wraith friends? Or is that a perfumer? I think it's the friends that call the wraiths. Yeah, whom we first met in Lyurnia. Yeah, okay, I think a glowstone would be useful here. Yep, that's exactly who it is. Wow, you have like one HP left. Oh no, that's bad. Just gotta be quick. So stressful fighting them. Oh, well, we've used our first flasks. Yeah, when I was at the site of Grace, 
I uh, hit the... Yeah, it's just a pile of bodies, isn't it? Yeah, I want to go home too. <laughs> um, I hit the add charge to Estes Flask or Estes Flask. Uh, add charge to Flask because it doesn't specify Cerulean Tears or Crimson Tears. Um, and it actually stated that the charges were already at the maximum. So, in other words, I think it's 13 or 14 charges is the maximum. Gosh darn it. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we will have to come back here, I think. Yeah, I suppose with those friends, we've still not tried a healing incantation. We do have healing incantations. A couple of them, actually three of them, I think, of different kinds. One is the bestial healing, which heals over time. Then there's the one, yeah, just heal. And then there was another one I equipped as well. Was it order healing? So we have three different healing spells. We should try that next time. Just don't know, like... Because isn't the casting time kind of long for those? Like, because that friend is quite, they're quite quick and quite nimble. Okay, I am definitely turned around now. I'm gonna say we have not been here because of all the slugs. I'm sorry, slug friends. He can't bank some of these heals. <laughs> oh gosh darn it. Okay. There we go. Oh darn it. This place is so reminiscent of the depths, and I'm not saying that they, like, FromSoft is lazy or cheap or anything like that, it's just, it's hard not to draw comparisons. I think this is where we just came from, that is where we just came from. Um, and for me personally, that's a great... No. Okay, that was bound to happen. That was bound to happen. <laughs> I was distracted by the story I was about to tell, or, you know, recount about... Gosh darn it. About uh, being in the depths in Dark Souls 1. When I was cursed by some basilisks, which... Oh, okay, that works out then. I was cursed by some basilisks, which almost led me to quitting Dark Souls 1. And of course, if I had done that, my life would look, you know, sure it would be largely the same, but at the same time, you all have changed my life in many respects, and uh, I'm very grateful for that. And without having finished Dark Souls 1, you know, there's almost no chance that I would have persisted to such a degree with the series that I would decide one day, hey, maybe I'll make some videos of me 
talking complete nonsense for several hours at a time while playing these games, and maybe people will want to watch that. Okay, so this is the start of the tunnel. And then we had that ladder here. You know, I don't think we finished even exploring the tunnels, but... I'm curious as to what is here. I can see some hands, of course. Why wouldn't there be hands here? Probably wasting our fire arrows. We should just have normal arrows equipped. Uh oh, uh oh, what's happening? I heard the music change. I guess because they aggroed onto me. Oh no. It's gonna be a giant hand somewhere, isn't there? Oh my, okay. I almost jumped out of my chair. <laughs> I should have seen that coming. Oh gosh darn it. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised they uh, didn't let out a huge scream there and wake up a relay of a star in the next room. Let me out. Let me out of here. Must eat more. Defile more. Everything that matters to you for generations to come. I am the Dung Eater, a scourge upon the living. Alright, so we found the Dung Eater's flesh. I asked you not to disturb me. <laughs> I asked you to leave me be. Ah, <sighs> dung eater, okay. That's, um... Hmm. So, this is very reminiscent of in Bloodborne. Right after the boss fight with... Oh, testing my knowledge or my memory here. Ludwig. Right after the boss fight with Ludwig in the Old Hunters DLC, we arrive at... What is it called? The Clock Tower. Um, and there's a, a bunch of prison cells. And in addition to finding Braidor the Hunter, we find Yamamura the Hunter. Yamamura the Hunter? Yamamura Beast Hunter, something like that. And he's basically doing this. So we can't lock on to him, which suggests dialogue. Okay, interesting. I'm tempted to just murder him and <laughs> just be done with it. But I suppose, you know, I'm thinking about Blackguard. I judge Blackguard very harshly, and he doesn't seem to be that bad, other than being somewhat crass and misogynistic. But yeah, let's uh, see what he has to say. Who are you? Hmm. Leave your jail or say nothing. Let's say nothing. Oh, I am the Dung Eater. A scourge upon the living. I must eat more. Defile more. Okay, I was going to say, is he going to go back to it? And then he did. Yeah, eventually he did. Let me out. Let me out of here. Hmm. So, if we let him out, he's going to invade us, right? And, like, try to... Yeah. 
I suppose we can let him try. Or we can just say nothing again, see what happens. Okay. Pretty unremarkable cell. I guess we're leaving. We're gonna let them out. Let me out. Okay, you can leave. I've been here long enough. I will kill again and defile each corpse with care, <laughs> just to be sure that when they're reborn, they'll be cursed, along with their children and their children's children. For all time to come. What a nice fellow you are. <laughs> I will kill again just to be be good. Okay, let's do a safe quit, see if he's still here. He is not. So, we are going to want to remember to go to the round table hold at some point and speak with him. Um, although I presume at some point soon he's going to be invading us and coming to speak with us, so to speak. Very interesting stuff. Um, so, again, speaking to the one of the central themes of the game, which is that in a quest for, you know, something that's been in the back of my mind all of this time, and I've not really said it out loud because it's just been kind of obvious, which is, you know, much of what's happening in this world is happening as a result of a thing called biopower, which I mentioned in an earlier episode and linked in an earlier episode that I was on an episode of the Snack Covenant, Sinclair Lore and Sophie Pillbeam, as well as with Redgrave, wait, sorry, be wary of right, um, in which we discussed Foucault biopower discourse in and around the healing church in Bloodborne. Okay, so we have been there, okay. And one of the things I talked about, as I just mentioned in that episode, was biopower. And so biopower, um, I don't have my notes in front of me, of course, but you could reduce it to some degree to the power to... L the power to let, or I guess the simplest form of it would be the power to make die. So you have power over someone's biology in the sense that you can make them die. So that is like in warfare, it's essentially biopower. Um, but more, <clears throat> excuse me, more recently, biopower has become uh, more accurately the power to let live. So, you know, if you have medical treatments that are only available to a certain class of people, you have the power to let them live uh, or to let particular people live. And by extension, you also have the power to let die. So uh, something like 50% of you statistically are in the United States, as far as my channel analytics are concerned. Um, and so many of you are, I'm sure, familiar with a system in which Healthcare is only provided to those who are able to pay, whether through insurance or, you know, through their personal finances. And so every day in the United States, um, biopower is exerted on citizens, you could say, because um, politicians, insurance providers, all of these people are uh, exercising essentially the power to let particular citizens die because they're not willing to... Um, spend the money that the U.S. could absolutely afford to spend to provide everyone with appropriate health coverage. 
And so, yeah, in this game, biopower is almost made even more literal in the sense that it's, you know, people are taking the <laughs> body parts of other beings and grafting it onto themselves in a way that is obviously, yeah, um, from a spiritual perspective, extremely problematic in that, you know, the Dung Eater friend was just saying he <clears throat> wants to defile the, these bodies so that their children, their children's children, and their children's children, children's children, <laughs> are all cursed as a result of that. Okay, so I think we've now explored the sewers to... Um, okay, that just... <laughs> gosh darn it. <laughs> my heart fluttered there. It's just, oh my god. That scared me. Thank you, Havoc Physics Engine. Uh, I don't think we've seen where this has gone, so it's... Or maybe we have. So yeah, all of that is to say that, you know... I think we're seeing another form of biopower in this game. And it's a form that's slightly different from the type of biopower that I've dealt with in my academic work. And, you know, and I've talked about in the context of Bloodborne previously. Um, but it's interesting because, yeah, it is tied to all of these different things. Gosh, yeah, I'm not sure where to go from here. Like, I know where we can go, but I feel like I keep getting turned around. Um, I don't know if we've dropped in this hole yet, so it might be worth trying. Oh, okay, never mind. So all the holes lead to this same room, except that there was that one that led behind the fence. Yeah, the music here has an extremely eerie vibe. It reminds me of some of the music from Demon Souls. Smithing stone level six. The next <laughs> the next pack seems familiar indeed. Is this a bubble friend? No. The zombie hug friend. Wow, that's a lot of HP. Place for these flowers to be.
Are they just rising up out of the ground? What? Oh, preserving polis is very nice. Gosh darn it, more tunnels. Oh, of course. Hello. You're here to help me recreate my original experience in the depths I hear. Joke's on you. I'm no longer a brand new Souls player. You're about 10 years too late. <laughs> Sorry, friend. Oh, doesn't open from the side, okay. they hear me? Uh oh. They're upset. Oh, we can't parry the kick. Baron. Doll of a curseborn Baron. Uses FP to unleash wraiths that chase down foes. Omen babies have all their horns excised, causing most to perish. These fetishes are made to memorialize them. Please don't hate me or curse me, please. Alright, um. Frightening and uh, disturbing. Centipede Glass Shard Again, remarkable feat of engineering this. Um, everything about this city in particular, but the game more generally is uh, remarkable in terms of there's a imp. <laughs> oh my goodness. By the time we come back to them, they'll probably be back in position because um, my recording session, my recording time for today is almost over. So it's likely, yeah, we will. respawn them back in place so that is the site of grace which is tremendous so there are imps everywhere here seemingly <laughs> they're very enthusiastic these imps spiral staircase that I have likened to the Duke's Archive jail. Don't know that we finished exploring it because I think we might have taken an alternate path there. Maybe I'm wrong about that.
Okay. Is that a jump we can make? I want to say probably not. Oh, okay, well we can just make it from here, so that's fine. Whoop. <laughs> Golden Rune level 10. So where did that friend go? <laughs> I feel like I can hear his footsteps. Oh, silly me, I should have kicked the ladder. Whoops. Oh, don't tell me. Oh, okay. These are pipes we have not yet explored. Again, I feel like there was something just like that in the depths where <laughs> a rat led you in a particular spot. Oh yeah. Okay, that's a giant rat running away from us. Couldn't hurt to have a little bit of extra stopping power, so to speak. That is a massive rat. Clipping through. <laughs> okay, up before down. That was a flash refill. Very nice. <laughs> Someone just died. Oh, gosh darn it. I'm turned around. Okay, yeah. Still full flasks, which is quite nice. We just have to make sure to avoid stupid deaths. I have you low. Extremely labyrinthian this place. Yeah, you know, we should be we Should be dropping prism stones as we go He says as he is not dropping any prism stones Okay, so I suppose that would have been good to not to not hit, so we could have it for later, but at the same time, you know, it would be good to know that we've cleared a spot. And uh, really, we don't need the flasks um, because of our current setup. <laughs> Friends keep just jumping to their deaths. Yes, I believe this is the spot we did not explore. Oh, what the hell? 
What the hell was that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh man, okay. Uh, <laughs> I take that to mean we've already explored that spot. I'm gonna drop down here. Okay, we've already explored this one, obviously. Oh, I really should have kicked down that ladder. That was stupid. Okay, that's a loud, scary noise. <laughs> the music that plays when you've aggroed friends in here is frightening. Hopefully these friends don't have the best aim in the world. And perhaps you might say the best range. bound to happen there, friend. There was no scenario in which that was going to work out for you. Oh, man. Freezing grease. You can hear footsteps. So, surprisingly, based on what we've... Oh, okay. So this is that ladder, okay, good to know. Surprisingly, based on what we've learned about how this is apparently the seat of the maddening three fingers, you know, I'm surprised to find that we've not encountered any frenzied friends yet. I would have expected for sure that we would have encountered at least one or two frenzied adversaries at some point. Oh, I should have equipped some new arrows. Do we really not? Wow, we've really run out of plain arrows. Oh no, we haven't. Okay, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> Trying to aggro all these friends. Okay, well played. Oh, this is bad, potentially.
just holding my breath there <laughs> for a long time. Oh, let's. <laughs> I was like, wait, what am I, why am I holding my breath? <laughs> this isn't real. I have a 9 a.m. meeting today, it's almost eight. And I'm sure my colleagues are gonna be like, so how's your morning going? Oh, you know, just uh, <laughs> explored the sewers underneath the royal capital, fought some imps, you know, some omens. <laughs> investigated the origins of a uh, dreadful root system that is infecting an entire world you know just standard Thursday morning stuff wouldn't know how to begin to explain it Parry that. Can parry that. Shadow bait. Incantations of the Two Fingers servants, who once served as the assassins of the Round Table Hold, creates a pale gold shadow before the caster, luring foes of human build and attracting their aggression. So basically, a, a, a luring skull for tarnished builds, or for tarnished NPCs. This incantation can be cast while in motion or crouching, and will still affect foes that are already in a combat state. It is said that those beguiled by the shadow see within it a hated foe. So it sort of preys on their, it's like a, is that a Freddy Krueger thing? Preys on something you already know and are afraid of. So main hallway once again. So yeah, I think this would much more accurately be termed a legacy dungeon. I was sort of, as I mentioned earlier, throwing around that term quite a bit in the early stages of this playthrough, or you know, in the early stages post episode 30 um because someone mentioned that name in the comments with reference i think to stormvale or something it was either stormvale or Rai lucaria academy and i was like oh yeah that makes sense but yeah thinking about the name a little bit more you can use it with a bit more specificity Okay, so we might have to return. Gosh, I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> might have to return to the top of this room. Or is this how we entered? Oh yeah, I think this is where we entered the area. Gosh darn it. This is how we entered the area. I think it was here. Indeed, okay.
So let's go kick down this ladder. And then I guess the next thing to do is to just descend. Question is, where can we do that safely? Not there, in other words. <laughs> Definitely a kill volume there. Scare up somewhere. Oh, crud. I can hear friends running too. Um, oh, okay, there's a Lobster down there. That's sort of her uh, crayfish. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Okay. Um, I think we can make the jump to that pipe from above. Oh, okay. So I've already been here. So there's no point. All right. I'm going to start laying prism stones just so we know where we've been. In fact, I'm even going to put it on my hotbar for now. Just to make it that little bit easier. Okay, that removed it from my... I'll have to remember to fix that afterwards. But for now, that's helpful, I think. Gosh, this place is labyrinthian. Oh my goodness. So when faced with a fork in the road, I've been going left before right. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's been working, but... Okay, lots of dead ends here. No, it looks like there was an item there, so we've definitely been there already. My apologies, it's now the following day. Um, from the day I first started recording. It's now Friday, May the 19th. It's 
2023 at about 7 a.m. I hope you're all still having a fan Ooh, fantastic day, although it's just for flash switch. Whoa, okay. They were in league together, seemingly, those two. Okay, so... That's interesting. Ah. Another dead end, though, but... Ooh, smithing cell level 8. Where would that take us? Up to plus 24, so... Yeah, our weapon... Upgrade has stalled somewhat. I hope there's no limit on the number of rainbow stones you can use. I can't remember which game imposed the limit. I think it was Dark Souls 2. Where you can only place a certain number and then after that they started disappearing. The If you laid down, I don't remember what the exact number was, but if you laid down something like 11, then, uh, or if you say you laid down 10, Okay, we've been here. Say you laid down 10. Then the 11th one you laid down would make the first one you laid down disappear. So you can only have 10, 10 at a time. But again, I don't remember the exact number. Okay, so... I want to say we've been up here, but I'm not sure, but we can lay the prism stone down here now. Yeah, okay, so we have been here. up in there, so next is here. I see... Oh, is that rat alive? No. <laughs> Gosh darn it. They moved. Thanks, Havoc Physics Engine. Um, which scared me. Okay, let's check here. <clears throat> Apologies once again, I... <clears throat> Jeez Louise, I am losing my voice. I should be clearing my... Clearing my throat away from the microphone, so my apologies for that. I'm so lost. <laughs> okay, I think we've explored all of this now. So, do we want to go down the hole? I want to say we've been down that one. We've probably been down both of these, so let's... Uh, but I think this one would have been second oh yeah okay I think we've explored this pretty extensively we've not been able to find the other side there though okay I think I see the way down however first I wanted to check that spiral staircase again which was I think in this direction um because when we first entered that area we immediately dropped it down was it here no I think it's on the opposite side um we immediately dropped down because there was a scarab right underneath us and you know of course I think that was intended however I think there is an alternate path that could lead somewhere. Here. 
here. So we drop down to the left here. Now I mentioned the prison tower in the Duke's archives as a as a place this reminded me of. Um, to add to that, I'd say this also reminds me of... Oh, okay, so it's just a dead end. This also reminds me of... Gosh, I don't remember what it was called. <laughs> In the Ring City, there was a spiral staircase just like this one. Sort of towards the end of the playable area. I can see what looks like an item shiny down there. So we'll definitely be able to access the lower region there. The question is how? So I do think I'd see, I do think I sing, ugh, I can't speak. <laughs> Again, apologies, it's very early in the morning, so. What the heck? Okay. I don't know if we missed that last time or what. Um, but yeah, I do think I see the path forward. That is one loud crayfish. <laughs> okay, so we'll see if we can't. make our way down there because that it seems to me is the most obvious way forward and there's this pipe here indeed okay where to from here Oh, crud. Really? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, this is bad. Because if we can't go down... And we can't go up... Oh, man. That means we'll have to basically warp away from here. Unless I'm missing something fairly obvious. Uh, what if we try to... S so when you save quit... Oh. <laughs> I forgot how beautiful Regret's beard is. When you save quit, the game sort of tries to remember where you are. And if you're in a certain position, uh, then... And it, it's not quite sure how to place you, then it could place you higher or lower. So let's go right up against the wall here. <laughs> Regret. And do a save quit and see what happens. Nope, no luck. Gosh darn it, that's terrible. Oh, what? Okay, I'm confused. But you know, if it works, then I'm okay. Uh, here we go. 
Okay, yeah, I thought so. That's That was very strange. So that must have been the only part that wasn't covered by a death volume. Uh oh. Crayfish angry! <laughs> Love the rhythmic movements. This might be the end of us. Oh no, there's multiple of them! I should have seen that coming. Oh my goodness. Smithing stone level seven, somber smithing stone, I should say. Oh, what the, what the heck? Okay, that's really cool and interesting. This place is actually connected to catacombs. Fetish bathed in golden magic. Shackles were used to bind the accursed people called the Omen, and these ones were made to keep a particular Omen under strictest confinement. Though faint, the shackles still retain vestiges of power, enough to trap the once bound Moog on Earth, if only for a short time. So we have one of these for both Moog and Margit. So I don't believe that up until this point we've um, we had any confirmation that Moog was Omen. But that makes sense. Oh, that, that makes sense. Um, I'm not sure that there was anything indicating that Moog was an Omen, but All the same. Correct. Strip of white flesh. <laughs> and we're back. It is now roughly 24 hours later. <laughs> A really of Astora woke up quite early yesterday so I had to stop recording so this place is more or less what I expected in terms of the locale in which we would find the dung e the dung eater L looks pretty dreadful so we're getting Some tremendous upgrade materials here. Running. Oh, is this where we're actually supposed to jump down? <laughs> Did I miss a much more obvious route down here? It looks like I may have. Whoops. What 
thank you for the rating, friends. So that hole in the wattle, and excuse me, I can cannot yet speak. That hole in the wall leads to the catacombs. So, yeah, I am starting to think that we were right in that. So this is, you know, it's not supposed to be the entrance to the catacombs. And yet, it pretty much. Takes the appearance of that. Um. Unless it's meant to be a makeshift one, because you know there are different bricks around around the um, doorway, what has become the doorway, than there are next to them, suggesting that it, you know it may have initially been a hole a hole in the wall, but they actually specifically tried to keep it open. I don't know. Could be wrong about that. But yeah, you know, <laughs> you would expect that if this is leading to some place in Liondale, wow, once again, um, you would expect that if this was leading to some place in Liondale, that the entrance itself, the, the entrance that's supposed to be the entrance, would be the place where you would find the bonfire or the site of grace. But no. Okay, well, we're not going back up top anyway, so we might as well have a rest here. Liondel Catacombs. Okay, first things first, I want to see where this elevator leads. <clears throat> Because if it leads up, okay, it leads up. Oh gosh, darn it. It's an elevator that is not just an elevator. <laughs> okay. So we have another one of those situations here, it looks like. Where, okay, this one has a bit more detail than this one, or am I, you know, I think it was just the lighting. I was thinking that maybe we had to reunify the two. <clears throat> yeah, my voice is still, <laughs> you know, I've gotten up, woken up at 6 a.m. all week <clears throat> and it's now Saturday May the 20th and I considered sleeping in today ultimately decided that you know I wanted to play Elden Ring more than I wanted to sleep but you'll have to accept my sincerest apologies if my uh, lazy tongue makes for difficult to listen to commentary. So th this friend is just going to continually respawn now. Am I supposed to hit the spot where he died a million times? <laughs> yeah, wow, okay. And we're not actually getting any runes when we kill him. So let's keep moving. Okay, we're moving away. Oh my gosh, that scared the daylights out of me. 
want to say I jumped <laughs> jumped out of my chair. Okay, so I suspected that we would not be making it back up here, and yet here we are. So that's really interesting. This I would not have expected. I would not have, oh gosh darn, Havoc physics engine. I would not have expected that to be a shortcut exit, that statue there. Yeah, these friends are just going to continually respawn. Okay, nothing here, I guess. Those are some very loud crayfish. <laughs> you can hear their footsteps up above and down below. Oh. So the boss door is right there. So again, I'm just looking at where we are on the map. And if we turn left here, heading in that direction, yeah, this is where... Yeah, I'm beginning to think more and more that... Okay, I'm beginning to think more and more that once we complete this dungeon, we'll emerge where we need to be. Oh, it's these friends. The I want to hug friends. At least it's not poisonous, the water. Oh my gosh, you have so much HP. I'm used to being able to one-shot everything. No longer, it seems. Or at least trash mob type enemies. Looks like this switch up there to the boss room. Okay, interesting. They're venerating something. Should have seen that coming. Friend behind us. There he is. Ghost Club for level six. Okay. Ah, uh, these are like the friends from the. What was it? The Kalu ruins?
Yeah, that's how I know that's a lie. Because the person doesn't actually show which gesture, so I'm going to rate that one poor. For being annoying. <laughs> Okay. Up, up before down would lead us here. What the heck? How are these friends already dead? Oh, so they're all gonna rise up. Hello? <laughs> okay, they haven't risen up yet. Grave Glove Wart level 9, very nice. What the heck? Okay, I don't know what the point of this is. Oh. Wait, unless this is... Did we just walk by the glove wart that was there? We've already been here, right? So my friends just keep coming. Oh no. This is the start of the area, isn't it? Or that was, yes, okay. Yeah, I completely missed the Grave Glove Ward. Whoops. Okay, so up here just leads back to the start. So what is this? Let there be confusion. Better not be <laughs> another one of those dungeons, like the the side dungeon. My goodness, that side dungeon. Or side tomb, I should say. Hello, imp friend. That was almost a good ambush. Almost. Yeah, I figured. So we're getting closer to where we need to be, I think. <laughs> but now farther away. <laughs> ah, there it is, okay.
Although one way or the other, yeah, we're going to be proceeding through the boss door anyway, so. I'm going to make sure there's nothing else up here, and I think we're good. Alright, I don't know what that person would have been confused about. That was relatively straightforward. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Esker, Priest of Blood. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, is that like a swarm of bees or something? Or hornets? What the? Okay, that's pretty cool. I'll give them that. Oh, no. Wow. You get absolutely obliterated. What an absolute massacre. Okay, we need to take out the doggos first. Holy moly, that was brutal. Annoying that the dogs don't count as for the purposes of the great rune that the dogs don't count as friends that we've defeated because they really ought to. Get wrecked. Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Talisman depicting the exaltation of the Lord of Blood raises attack power when blood loss occurs in the vicinity. Render up your offerings of blood to your Lord. Drench my consort's chamber. Sh <laughs> Slake his cocoon's thirst. His awakening shall herald the dawn of our dynasty. All right. Wait a second. Gosh darn it, I spent all that time talking about, oh, oh yeah guys, yeah trust me, this is gonna lead to where we need to go. All our problems will be solved. And yet, it's just saying that we, gosh darn it, that we will return to the entrance. Well I guess it depends on where, it, what it considers the entrance. So let's see. Gosh darn it. Okay then, so basically forget everything I said about this being... How could this not be a makeshift? Ah, oh, gosh darn it. Okay, so this is not the way forward. So, yeah, we have to start over again. <laughs> wonder if there's some way to kill these friends. <laughs> I just want to find the sight of Grace friends, don't mind me. There it is. 
So if this is the subterranean shunning grounds, which is meant specifically for Omen. Then why the heck were, yeah, I think there was only one Omen maybe in that dungeon. So yeah, I'm a bit confused by that whole thing. Gosh, now everything has respawned as well. Oi, okay. To be honest, I'm a bit at a bit of a loss here in terms of where we're supposed to go now. Oh, you know what? Okay. On that note, we might as well go to the round table hold to catch up with Dung Eater friend and all, who's aggroed onto me. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I asked you not to disturb me. <laughs> I'll defile you most. Come to the outer moat. <laughs> I'll defile you most. Gosh, that's how you know it's too early. I'll defile you next. Come to the outer moat. Okay, so... I assume he's referring to this area here. Or potentially this area. Okay, oh, it could be anywhere there. Um, hmm. Okay, we might as well give in all of our bell bearings while we're here. So yeah, we can purchase... Um, well, we have to plus six for that. Up this many. So yeah, we still have a ways to go. And yeah, lots of these. I don't know why Pidia's bell bearing is separate. Okay. I can't hear them anymore. The voices of the spirits cowering from the curse. I suppose the Dung Eater must have left the round table. I just pray nothing ill comes of <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, friend. That was me. I'm pretty sure something ill will come of this. Oh, man. What have I done? Okay. Um, so we can upgrade Jellyfish Friend. All right. We got her up to plus nine now. Took you no matter it's all out your own. So, where to? Um, insofar as it's the moat. Yeah, let's go to the sealed tunnel. Okay, you know what?
Yeah. It's possible it's because we don't have the stats to use this. But yeah, it's not working. Gosh darn it. I was hoping that would work. <laughs> yeah, but we'll put a few more levels into faith in order so that we can meet the requirements for that so that we can give that another shot. Okay, so this does not appear to be the moat about which he was speaking. That is one high jump. Wow, okay. Um, hmm. So we could have been speaking about this one. an item here. This golden rune level 2. Oh. It's a fancy move you got there, friend. Could he have been talking about this moat here? We'll see if Black Art Friend has seen anything. All right, mate. Want some more crap, dear? Yeah. And now I've seen it here again. Never thought I would. What he does to those bodies. It was... It was him. No question. That monster. He's lurking round here. Okay, where though? <laughs> it's not very helpful. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> My abundance. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Okay, um, maybe we should save quit? Oh god, I don't like that. It's, oh. Oh. Gone. Why you do this? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Blackguard friend. <laughs> Serves me right. Fitting bloody end for a jumped up little shit with big ideas. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Help me out. Would you make? I don't want to get cursed. Just let me die. I don't want to live like this. Not anymore. So, please. Oh, man. Seedbed, curse, black arts, bell bearing, and iron ball. Black Arts Iron Mask. Oh, you. I will kill you. 
and defile your corpse. Then the pox will truly be your own. Yeah, good luck, mate. Crap, why? I I <laughs> no stop. I have no quarrel with you, friend. Oh gosh darn it. Thankfully. <laughs> These, <laughs> these three friends are still good. Oh, man. Iron Manifer of Spherical Shape. Big Bogart. The Black Guard's weapon of choice. Not a weapon to be taken lightly, as its weighty blows shatter bones with ease. Skill. Bragart's Roar. Declare your presence with a boastful roar. Raises attack power, defense, and stamina. Recovery speed. So the Blackguard's name was, or Blackguard's name was Big Bogart. Sword of Milos. Sinister greatsword fashioned from a giant's backbone. Meets out wounds like a lopsided saw blade and restores some FP upon defeating an enemy. Milos was undersized for a giant and was viewed as sullied and terribly grotesque. Unique skill, Shriek of Milos, lets out a horrific cursed scream that reduces all damage negation and status resistances for nearby foes. With active strong attacks will change to a combo attack. Blackguard's Iron Mask, Iron Mask forced on convicted prisoners, worn by the Blackguard, Big Bogart. To Bogart, the mask made him all the more threatening and helped him get what he wanted, but it was also a mirror of his emptiness. You know, thinking about Blackguard and where he started has me thinking about Zarias the Scout, because we've not obviously seen her since we, you know, completely ruined the Volcano Manor. No, rip friend, I'm sorry. You know, it could have been worse. He could have, like, boiled you alive with like you were prawns or crayfish or crabs <laughs> um but yeah terrible absolutely terrible so we are gonna want to search for Zarias at some point i think eh, i don't know if it'll be today but yeah let's go back to the round table hold see if maybe spirit tuner friend has something to say about this Greetings. Are you here for spirit tuning? Be on your guard, I beg you. He's back. The Dung Eater, again. I can hear them, the spirits as they howl and lament in fear of the curse. And worse than ever, the reverberations of the twisted malice in itself. But after all this time, I've started to grasp it now. I can hear, in the malison, Another fearsome order. What the heck is a Malison? <laughs> a curse, apparently. So just another word for curse. Okay, so he's back. There you are. You warded off my blessing, despite the curse stirring within you. No one has succeeded in that before. How? I thought. Then it hit me that you are, in fact, me. And I 
am the dung eater. It is my flesh that must receive the blessing. Right, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Give me your blessing. Defile my flesh with the seed bed curse again and again until it is done. Until a cursed ring coalesces, and my one day defile order itself. Countless I have killed, and countless I have defiled, and soon the fruits will be born. Hundreds will be reborn cursed, and they'll bear thousands of cursed children, who bear tens of thousands more. A few of those will be born just like me, and they'll kill and defile and bless in my stead the rotten fools my fate was the grandest most brilliant of them all my corporeal flesh lies in the sewer jail beneath the capital give it your blessing defile my flesh with the seedbed curse until a curse ring coalesces that may one day defile order itself. All right, then. Um. <laughs> so last night when I was doing the dishes and it's funny uh, how often I come to these revelations while just doing mundane things, and I think that's just sort of how our minds work, you know? you doing mundane things you don't really think about, and that in the process you've sort of freed up your mind to think about other things. And in this instance, I was thinking about Blythe, and how Blythe was... Oh crud, actually we should level up. Indeed. So hold that thought for one second. So yeah, I was thinking about Blythe and how Blythe is supposed to be Ronnie's stepbrother. And, you know, that left me very confused about what their actual familial relationship was oh crud dreadful and yeah the quote unquote revelation I came to which may not be correct is that Blythe is the son of Queen Marika. Again, I don't know if that's true. Or yeah, the extent to which that's accurate, but... Oh, crud. I don't know if we could start here. Also, just sort of blindly killing these omen friends. Um. Okay, so that's the entrance, the ladder there. Cleaver. Heavy bladed curved sword of colossal size awarded to an to omen as a tool of war. This weapon is made to take advantage of brute strength. The pattern etched upon the blade is the remnant of a deteriorative malediction. 
Indeed, when bestowing a weapon, preparations must be made for taking it away. Malediction. Okay. So deteriorative is something that deteriorates, but and malediction is obviously something bad because of the inclusion of the prefix mal. So like the opposite of benediction, maybe? Let's see. A magical word or phrase uttered with the intention of bringing about evil or destruction. A curse. A remnant of deteriorative malediction. Okay. I was wondering. I was wondering why we weren't gaining HP back. That's why. Forgot that we had died. <laughs> yeah, and I was complaining in that boss. You know, guys. I really think you should regain HP when you kill these dogs. <laughs> and of course, the reason we weren't regaining the HP is that I needed to reactivate the great room. So yeah, my bad. That makes sense. Down, indeed. I really don't know where we're supposed to go. But yeah, might as well start basically from the beginning and just sort of clear things out. Gosh darn it. It would be just like me to just die right at the start, basically. There he is. <sighs> okay. Hi, friend. You okay, friend? <laughs> Coming. 
So we've heard about several different orders, quote unquote, uh, capital O order in this playthrough thus far. So there's the golden order that we've heard about most often. I think there's true order, which uh, Kenneth Height, Mr. Pedagogue of Progress, talked about. And now Roderica raised in with respect to Dung Eater Friend, the idea of a, another order. So yeah. Um, not sure what to make of that just yet. Okay. Should we rezone by doing a save quit? Let's give it a shot. Okay. Um so side of grace or side of grace. Round table hold then. Okay, so he's just gone now. Greetings. Are you here for spirit tuning? The voices of the tormented spirits are silent again. But it isn't like last time. I'm almost certain the spirits have escaped their confinement. Oh, yeah. Did you have anything to do with it, I wonder? I certainly did. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Um, so the spirits are free because we got revenge or something on. Yeah, I don't know. So I guess we're just headed back then. Not really sure where to go from here, to be honest. So, hmm. So yeah, I might just... <laughs> oh gosh, we're gonna die to a bunch of imps, aren't we? Oh no. Well played, Imps. Serves me right for treating you lightly. Taking you lightly, I should say. Gosh darn it. Oh, that was dreadful. Speaking of taking friends lightly, my goodness, that I should not have taken them so lightly. So, yeah, we're definitely missing something because, again, I see an item down there. So there has to be some way to descend lower here, but I've not yet been able to figure that out.
sorry friends. We really miss this item here? Fire grease. Okay, I think What might have happened last time, if we missed that item, oh, I see another item down there too. So we went into the tunnel. Oh gosh darn you. We went into the tunnel, but we did not proceed in this direction. Which would just be classic me. <laughs> missing something super obvious. Oh gosh darn it. Alrighty. Oh, beautiful. Okay, we got very close to being <laughs> inflicted with death blight there. Nomad ashes. Ashen remains in which spirits yet dwell, used to summon the spirit of a nomad, a member of a tribe that was entombed in the earth so as to bury the maddening disease that followed them, able to admit the terrible flame of frenzy from his eyes, but has low HP and is frail, unable to take much in the way of punishment. I see an elevator. Question is, how the heck do we get over there? Not that way. Uh. Crud. Is that the extent of our progress? Okay, I'm pretty sure hit that hit the wall. So That's too far. Okay, so maybe we do have to... have to go back into those pipes. I really am not a fan of sewer mazes. <laughs> I was wondering why I was getting so little HP regen from murdering friends. And once again, it's because we did not have our rune arc active. Gosh 
Gosh, you are way too nimble. Clearly, have not done everything here, but what we're going to do is put our prism stones on our hop bar so that we're able to just mark where we've been. A lot of hyper armor on that punch attack. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> Sorry, Omen friend. Sure, we've been up that tall ladder that leads to a shortcut or something. Indeed. Is an imp trying to attack us through the floor of the or the top of the pipe? Oh, jeez, you scared me, friend. <laughs> Commoner shoes. Okay, same as the other commoner clothing items that we've read. Okay, come on, that's not fair. <laughs> and throwing things at us through the wall. Oh, okay, now they just died, so... I guess the fairness evened out.
Oh, I see an item down there. Did I? Indeed, okay. some sort of trap there. Smithing stone level five. Oh, okay. So this is the other side of that gate. A little bit of progress. A tiny little shred of progress, which, you know, <laughs> it's better than none. Progress still. Gosh, my voice is cracking. Oh, gosh darn it, jar friend. There's a tiny, tiny jar friend here, too. Oh. Uh. <laughs> go, 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 go. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Sorry, jar friends. I really am. I just stole that jar's like child or something. Oh, my bad. That is what I like to see. Oh, jeez. Forsaken depths. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'd like to say that for soft joy, indeed. I would like to say that I was unreasonable to compare that area to the depths, but the fact that this area even has depths in the name, I think that says something. So that elevator shaft is just an elevator shaft, seemingly. So more catacombs. Oh, okay. So, are we about to meet the three fingers? Whoa. Okay, I just want to be ready for whatever's coming here. And, <laughs> as you all know, I also want to capture a potential thumbnail image. <laughs> so excuse me for one moment. Oh, gosh darn it. To do that, um, it actually looks like there's just a chest here. Oh, never mind. Moog the Omen. Okay. Hello, Mr. Luminary. Nice to meet you. I thought I was on your side. Maybe I'm supposed to defeat him in order to prove myself or something. Oh, gosh darn it. I'm not gonna do it like that. No, I'm not like that. Oh, gosh darn it. Some really cool spells.
What the heck? <laughs> oh gosh darn it. Greedy. I should not go greedy. Whew. Blood flame talons. Blood Oath Incantation granted by the Lord of Blood creates blood flame lacerations before the caster, which explode in an instant. This incantation can be cast repeatedly. After dealing damage, blood flame continues to build up onset of blood loss for a very short time. This is quite the altar. This is a unique, like we've seen, I think two different types of returning to roots rooms for lack of a better way of describing them. One is just the standard one you find in most catacombs. And then the second one is the one that you find in the hero's graves. And this, this is the third variety we've seen thus far. Cathedral of the Forsaken. So, you know, I thought we were supposed to be on Moog's side. <laughs> Maybe we'll go... Where the heck is... He's not at the Rose Church anymore. White Mass Veray. I can't remember where he went. Trees favor plus one. A talisman depicting a special blessing of the Erd tree raises maximum HP, st Ooh, stamina, and equip load. So this is the Ring of Favor. Um, it is said that when the age of the Erd tree began, such blessings were personally bestowed upon their recipients by Queen Marika herself. So this is um, it depicts Queen Marika depicting or depicting. Um, bestowing a blessing upon someone. So we are obviously going to want to equip that one right away. Um, in place of the... Let's say that is first, and then... All right, that works for me. Okay, well, we, we, gosh darn it. We do still have the problem of not knowing where the heck we're going. <laughs> but maybe that's a problem for the next episode. So thank you all very, very much for joining me, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.